as kings and priests, we have that authority to declare and proclaim and, and, and to see things in our spirit. This may blow some of you away, but I just have been challenged lately by the Lord to, to lift up my eyes as far as the size of our church. Now, we, we have a, our church is only just a couple of years old. I'm thrilled. We have a good turnout today. You know, we have, we have several people, a couple families that are not here today, but we've, we've got a good congregation this morning, pretty good response. And as you, but you see, we have empty chairs, and we still can put more people in this building. Uh, we, f we think we could put close to 100 people in this building. Well, I'm telling you something. If we get to that place, this building is going to be way too small. It already is for our youth and different things that we have going on. But, but here's what the Lord has really been challenging my heart on. And, the, and, and I've just been speaking this out. I, I, yesterday morning I went out fishing for a little bit and just, just, just talking to the Lord about some of this stuff. And, and uh, you know, I just really feel that very soon our church is going to be now at a numbers, and numbers mean absolutely nothing. I want you to understand this. It's not that we judge our church by how many people are in our church, but, but the Lord has just been challenging me to declare and proclaim that we have a church of 200 people. Amen. 200 people. Now, you know, let me tell you something. 200 people in a church in Citrus County. Now, if we were in Tampa, it wouldn't be 200 people. It would be closer to about six or 700 people. But in Citrus County, little old Citrus County, our whole county is about 100,000. You know what? We, we could believe God for 200 people in our congregation. And you know what? We should have 200 because there are, there are at least that many people out there that need to have what we experience here every day. Some of you that are watching this, maybe, maybe you're close. Maybe you live in Citrus County and you're just watching, you're wondering, you check on our video from time to time. Let me tell you something, you need to be here. And, I, and I'm not just, I'm just not saying this braggingly and boastfully. I'm just saying, what happened? What happened here during that worship? You see, this morning, what happened here, as y'all just began to, things took place in the spirit realm here in this church. They always do. It always happens here. I put on, I sent on an email this week, um, the other day, to our email list. Some of you probably received it. If you're on my email list, if you'd like to be on my email list, make sure I have your email address and I'll make sure I get you on. But, but one of the things I, I, I mentioned is that, and I mean it, I'm so thrilled about the people of our church. The people of our church. And, and you know what? It's like we come to our church and, and things happen. We always have a good time. We get together. We laugh a lot. We're kidding around with each other a lot. There's, there's relationships that are here, and, it, and it's positive, and it's healthy, and it's good. And then I, then I mentioned not only that, but I'm surrounded by one of the greatest leadership uh, teams that any pastor could ever have. And, and, and the reason why I'm talking about that is that, that you know, it's just like in so many churches, Crean and I, where we've been before, unless we did it, it didn't get done. Around here, things happen, I don't even know about it, you know? But, but it happens because someone uh, got a vision to do something and to get the job done. And, and, and so with that in mind, a church is never as strong, never, a church can never be stronger than what its people are. And that's one of the reasons why we've got a good, strong church is because of you. And you guys need to pat yourselves on the back. And, and those of you that are, are, are part of our congregation through video, thank you for being a part and doing this thing. I'm excited about that, and I just want to bless that. And, and I'm just saying, you know what? Everybody in the county ought to be here. Because I believe without a shadow of a doubt that our church is the very best church in all of Citrus County. I believe that. You say, well, how dare you say something like that? There's a bunch of good churches in Citrus County. I know that, you know, but I'm telling you what, there's a bunch of good ones, but we're the best. You know why we're the best? Because this is the place God called me to minister. This is the place that God called you to, to worship. And I mean that. And if you want to come to a place, and, and, you know, and I'm going to show you something here in the Word here in a little bit. When, maybe if I can get there. But I'm going to show you something in a little bit. That, that, you know what, you can't be mixing law and grace and thinking that you're doing right. Because if you're part of a church that mixes law and grace, then guess what? You're under law whether you know it or not. You know what, if you're under a church and you're sitting in the ministry of a church, if you're on, on video, if you're watching today and you're sitting in the ministry of a church on Sunday mornings and 
maybe even 90% of it is grace. And there's that 10% of law, guess what happens? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And that 10% is going to get to you and it's going to bring you into the realms of fear, shame, and condemnation eventually. It may not be today, but I'll guarantee you, if it's there, it'll happen. It'll expose its ugly head. Religion can never stay quiet very long. <laughs> Glory to God. And we want you to leave our services. We want you, when you turn your computer down, and, or if you, I, I watch our messages on our, on our flat screen TV, you know, that's hooked up to direct TV. We can, you can watch it through the, the app, the extra app on your TV set, if you have internet in the house. But you know what? As soon as you turn your computer down, you turn your TV off, and you're watching this video, we want you to feel better about yourself than when you turned it all on. I hope you do. That's, our, that's why we exist, okay? Glory to God. Now, I want to um, continue on with a little bit here uh, into some of this. Uh, uh, this is Sound Grace Teaching Part 2, Matthew, for a title. Uh, Sound Grace Teaching Part 2. Um, last week, we, we looked at the need of teaching sound doctrine. Um, it's even in the case within the ranks of the grace camp. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more uh, fully here in a minute. But it seems that many uh, within the grace camp, I, you all understand when I say something like that, you know, be churches such as ours that, that have been given revelations of the, of the finished works of the cross and are teaching this, um, it, it seems like there are some that have gone off into some, some goofy teaching. Now, one of, the, one, of the, one of the, to be honest with you, one of the criticisms that I often hear, um, people will say, you know, you grace people. You know, you, you teach people that everything can go, that they can do anything, and as long as they're under grace, it's okay. If you want to go sleep with your neighbor's wife, go ahead and do it. If you want to do this, you want to, if you want to go steal, or if you want to go out and get drunk, it's okay. If you want to smoke dope, it's okay. to You're just, you're just free because you're in grace. And that is not what we teach and I'll be honest with you, that is not the true message of grace. But we do have, unfortunately, sadly to say, there are some that have come into this grace camp, and they've kind of snuck out the back door of the camp, and I'm just going to just say it this way, they're no longer in the camp, they're off here in La La Land someplace. Okay? And they were here, they got a hold of some things. I, I hear this from time to time from some of them. For instance, uh, some of the, the popular uh, preachers, uh, Jim and uh, Dave mentioned, Dave primarily mentioned this a minute ago when he was sharing. But Joseph Prince, okay, is a real good, sound grace teacher. I, I really highly recommend Joseph Prince's ministry. And if you want to get some good, basic understanding of grace, get a hold of his books, and get a hold of his teachings. We, we've said this before, we have a whole raft of, of CDs at home of Joseph's teachings, and we'd love, because we get his teachings every month free of charge to our church, because we're a part of his local church initiative, okay? And every month, free of charge, he sends. So we have a good library of a lot of good, solid Joseph Prince teaching. Come and get it, You'll let us know. When, when, we get a, when we get our own larger building, we have a library, we'll have all that stuff in it, you know? But, but get a hold of that stuff. But you know what? I hear some of these people in La La Land that have kind of snuck through the back door of the grace camp, and they'll say, well, well I'm beyond Joseph Prince. Um, I'm, I'm beyond Andrew Womack. You know, Creflo Dollar, he's kind of new at it all. He's just now getting it. But I've already gone beyond him. See, when you start saying things like that, I'm just going to just say it this way. When you start thinking things like that, let me tell you something. That's the spirit of pride in operation. That's not of God at all, you know. And, and, and it concerns me because when I look at some of these people and I see, man, there's a solid ministry there. Now, now to the institutional church over here, okay, here we are in this. This is where we used to be before we understood what the finished works of the cross were all about, okay, we're pretty religious, you know, we're trying, uh, you, you, some of you that were here Wednesday night, you know, y'all left, but Karina and I had a meeting with an individual, no one that's even here, so don't worry about it, don't look around, but, but we were sharing, he was questioning, some questions came up about sin after the service, and we were talking about, the, to the two 
people that were asking these questions about sin, and, and Karina and I were talking to them, ministering to them some scripture, going through scripture, showing them some things about sin. This guy walks in the door that knows these other guys, and he sat down and said, oh yeah, I'm just a sinner, you know. I, I've just been a sinner. Now, 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 to be honest with you, the guy smelt like a chimney, and man, he, he smelt like he was 80 proof, okay? <laughs> so he was pretty busy doing some things just prior to come, walking in the door, all right? But he began to argue with me, and he began to say, you know, I am a sinner. And I told him, he says, I said, you're not, brother. And I started sharing scripture with him. Even in the case he was in, in, in the state he was in, I was sharing scripture with him that you're not a sinner. Well, boy, I tell you what. He says, well, we all sin, and if you think you sin, if you don't sin, then, then who do you think you are? He says, I don't sin. Well, what do you mean you don't sin? We all sin. That's not what the Bible said. Come on now. And I see already, I'm already not getting into where I want to get, but this must be for a reason. This must be for a reason. You know, you, you, you all sin. Well, you know, and, and, and so I said to him, I said, well, are you saved? Now, you may want to write this, this passage down. Uh, I said, brother, are you saved? He said, yes, I'm saved. I, I know the Lord. And I said, well, now, now hold it. Um, I said, maybe you, you're saying you, 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 you still are a sinner, right? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, in the whole it, according to the Bible, then, then let, me, let me just invite you to salvation. You're really not saved. Boy, that got him, really got him going. You know? but, but, but listen to what 1 John chapter 3, beginning in verse 4 says, everyone who sins is breaking God's law. Oh boy, he would, well, we're all in agreement on that, aren't we, brother? Oh yeah, 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 no problem. For all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus Christ came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in Christ. There is no sin in Christ. Now where is Christ? He is in us. Where are we? We're in Christ. So guess what? There's no sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, beginning in verse 4. So there's no sin in him. And then I shared with him verse 6. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. See, I kept coming back to this brother with scripture. And he kept coming back to, well, I think, I think. I said, I'm not interested in what you think. Here's what the word of God says. You see? And we kept, we kept hitting him. Crane wrote on a whole bunch of scriptures to give. You know what? The guy was sitting right there. Either where Bill or Mike are sitting. I think where Bill's sitting. I was sitting about here where Mike is. And, and you know what? He got mad. He literally got me. Matter of fact, I thought he, was, he might even slug me. He was, that, he was that angry and that hot, and he got up and stormed out the door, and I thought to myself, what did I just do? I just did nothing but share the good news of the Lord Jesus. I just shared with him the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and, and religion rose up and got mad at the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on. See? So here's this, this goofy stuff that goes on, and, 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 and so what some of them don't see, that's where this guy was over here in that camp. All right? Now, we probably were all there at one time or another. Any of us who've been saved for a long time, been Christians for a long time, we probably came to Christ someplace in that real religious camp. We were told all the time what we should do, what we can't do, all the rules and the regulations and all these kinds, trying to measure up in order to please God. So, you know, trying to be holy enough over here, brother. Okay, we've come from that, and we saw what? We saw the actions of the cross. And Jesus died on the cross, and he said, it is finished. All of this that the institutional, organized church is trying to be and to become has already been done. So what they are trying to do, they're trying to be what, in fact, they already are. How many have ever seen your little puppy dog running around chasing its tail? How many feel that when you're in this thing, this is where you were? Come on, that's why a lot of people don't want to go to church today. They're so busy running around 
They're chasing their tail over here that they never come to the end. And here we've come to the answer. Man, they're trying to be holy. Christ died so that we are holy. They're trying to be sinless. Christ died, and we died with him on the cross, and so did our sin nature. So here we are, standing now on this side of the cross. Now we've entered into this wonderful thing we call this middle ground called the grace camp. I like to call it the place of balance. Now what we've had happen, so many of us were so influenced and so under the gun over here, it's like we were a little bird in the bird cage, and all of a sudden the door is released, opened, and now we are free. And what some have done, they have been so hurt by that, so influenced by that, so upset by all of that over here, they've come here and they said, you know what, I'm going to get as far from that as I can get. And then they're in this balance point, this place called the Grace Camp that I'm talking about. Is this making any sense with you? And what they've done now is they found the little hidey hole back door here, and they're saying, okay, now I'm, I'm so free. Now I'm, I'm even over here. I'm so far away from that. Now I am my own God. They even have gone so far. Some good people have come out of that thing, and they've gone into New Age and a whole bunch of phony, baloney, goofy stuff. And I'm saying, come on back. See, I get accused by some of these people because I teach and I preach, Joseph Prince does, I teach and preach, Joseph and all these other guys do, I teach what is called a balanced grace message. I don't believe there's a thing wrong with that word balance. You talk to these people over here, though, they hear the, hear the word balance, and immediately they're going like this to you because what they're thinking you're trying to do is bring them back over here. And I'm saying, uh-uh. No way, Jose. We've been set free from that. No one wants to go back into that stuff. But here is a wonderful place to be. Remember when we first started, Queen and I started, started coming into this revelation about four years ago? We used to share, I've spent some time on the USS Nimitz, um, a huge aircraft carrier. And our son, oldest son, was stationed on that ship. And I got to, myself and my youngest son, we got to spend a week on that ship cruising from San Diego all the way up to Bremerton, Washington, on that ship. And I tell you, that ship is just awesome. I mean, I could go on for hours talking about the technology. It's even improved now since, you know, we were on that years ago. I saw our first GPS up, uh, back in the day. And, and the Navy had that. And we were up in the navigation plot room on the ship. And, and the navigator said, and here we are, and pointed to a spot on the ocean. And there was a little blip. And that was us as we were cruising up the coast. Of that was way before we knew about GPS in our car, on our phones, or all these kinds of things, you know. But they had that technology way back then. What I'm saying is, the deck is huge. Two huge catapults going off the bow of that ship. The only way, back in that day, it was the F-14 Tomcat, now it's the F-18 the Navy's using, but there's only two ways for any one of them. If there's a bombing sortie or there's some enemy fighters coming in, there's only two ways to get those planes in the air, and that's off those two catapults. See, if you're a plane and you're a Tomcat pilot and you get called to this mission, man, I gotta get there really quick, and you say, man, I'm gonna take the shortcut and go off the side of the ship, guess where you're gonna end up? in the drink. Now let me tell you something, the deck on that ship is huge. We were playing football on the deck of that ship, on the flight deck. Huge. Huge. You know, just to walk back and forth, just, I mean, we had one day we had a picnic out there, they called it a steel beach party, and they broke out the, they broke out all kinds of barbecue, big, big 55 gallon drums cut in half full of charcoal and they were cooking hamburgers. The officers were cooking it for, for the enlisted men and, and us that were visiting on the ship and we had a big part. But playing touch football out there, all kinds of things, just huge, all right? A lot of leeway, a lot of latitude on the deck of that ship. But if you go off the edge, you're going to go in the drink. See? And we'd look. One of my favorite places to be was on the stern of that ship, and there'd be a, there'd be a place, and you'd watch, you'd see the wake going behind you of that ship as we were going, sailing up the Pacific, up the coast of California. Just awesome, awesome. Those big, huge propellers and that big nuclear propulsion plant. I mean, just an awesome plant. I mean, just take your, and then be up on the bow, 
and that wind coming on your face, and you see the, the, see the bow, you look over the side, see that bow cutting through the water. It just, it just, I can't tell you what it did to you, you know, the, the size of it. So all kinds of latitude. Here, there's all kinds of latitude, folks. There's all kinds of freedom. There's all kinds of liberty. We're free from that, but we're not going off here into la-la land. And I'm going to tell you something. It may look like it's freedom to you, it may look good, and to the, some of these people that have gone into La La Land, it may seem like it's a good place to be. But let me tell you something, it's all they have done is traded one bondage for another bondage, because over here, there's no more finished works of Jesus Christ. It's not over there. And that's where we're going to go in some of this teaching for the next few weeks. We're going to go into some solid, solid doctrine of what grace is all about, of what a grace church, what this grace church stands for, what we believe in. But I believe it's going to be something that's going to just, it's not going to just tickle your ears. I believe it's something that's just going to help you grow. And more than anything, you know, when you talk to other people about this stuff, you're going to be able to talk to them about what our church really stands for. You know, because I think it's so, so vitally important. There is a need for some good, solid, sound doctrine. And you know what? I'm not going to go into any more this morning because I don't want to overload you. This has given you a little bit of where we're going. I, I just can't get out of this introduction stuff. I can't get into the meat of the stuff that I really want to get into. But I think it's, it's 1130. The Baptists have another half hour before they get to the buffet. <laughs> so I am giving you guys, you can get there before them today. Glory. Freedom. Freedom. You must be hungry. I'm really not, but I just don't, I just know, I just know to go any deeper into this thing, it's just going to be choking you. And then Joe's going to be all watching his watch, what he's trying to get out of here and all this kind of stuff. 500, I knew it, I knew it. He's got to get home. Is this okay? You all understand my heart on this stuff? Huh? He declared it, yeah, getting out early. We do it every once in a while, throw you off for a loop. But you know what? We've had enough happen today. My lands during that worship, we wouldn't have had to done another thing, really. I mean, God was just, it was just awesome. So it's not like we have to preach it up and make it happen here. It's already happened, all right? So, Father, we thank you for this. We thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Lord, I thank you for a church that stands for balance. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for ministries such as Joseph Prince and Creflo and Andrew and some of these people, Lord. Mark Drake, Lord, he's up, he's up there just tearing it up in Anchorage right now, Lord. Thank you, Father, for these men of God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, we can be a part, that we can even support financially. And, and Lord, we just, we just give you the praise, honor, and the glory for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're doing in uh, New Covenant Grace Fellowship right here in Citrus County, Florida. We praise you for it. We thank you, Lord, for those who are watching. We just bless you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, and we just pray that you're just experiencing a little bit of what we have a whole lot of here. Matter of fact, that you're just going to experience even more of what we're experiencing. We just bless you right now in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. if anybody needs prayer, come and get it. All right? Don't leave. I, I know we've had a lot of prayer already, but if anybody needs more prayer, come and get it. God bless you. See you at the buffet.